On 28 July 1914, Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia. Within days, long-standing mobilization plans went into effect to initiate invasions or guard against them and Russia, France and Britain stood arrayed against Austria and Germany in what at the time was called the Great War, and was later named World War I, or First World War. Austria thought in terms of one small limited war involving just the two countries. It did not plan a wider war such as exploded in a matter of days. British historian John Zametica argued that Austria-Hungary was primarily responsible for starting the war, as its leaders believed that a successful war was the only way it could remain a great power, solve deep internal disputes caused by Hungarian demands, and take control of the Balkans before the Russians moved in. Topic: Key players and goals. A small group made the decisions for the empire. They included the aged emperor Franz Joseph, his heir Franz Ferdinand, army chief of staff Franz Konrad von Hotzendorf, foreign minister Count Leopold Birchtold, minister president Karl von Sturgikach, and finance minister Leon Bylinski, all Austrians. The key Hungarian leaders were Prime Minister Istvan Tizer, Minister Istvan Buran, and advisor Leos Thalixi. Austria Hungary avoided major wars in the era between 1867 and 1914 but engaged in a number of minor military actions. The general staff maintained plans for major wars against neighbouring powers, especially Italy, Serbia, and Russia. The major decisions on military affairs 1867–1895 were made by Archduke Albrecht, Duke of Teschen, who was the nephew of the Emperor Franz Joseph and his leading advisor. According to historians John Keegan and Andrew Wheatcroft, he was a firm conservative in all matters, military and civil, and took to writing pamphlets lamenting the state of the army's morale as well as fighting a fierce rearguard action against all forms of innovation. Much of the Austrian failure in the First World War can be traced back to his long period of power. His power was that of the bureaucrat, not the fighting soldier, and his thirty years of command over the peacetime Habsburg army made it a flabby instrument of war. Franz Ferdinand realized that the rise of pan-slavism would rip the empire apart, and he had a solution called trialism. The empire would be restructured three ways instead of two, with the Slavic element given representation at the highest levels equivalent to what Austria and Hungary now had. Serbians saw this as a threat to their dream of a new state of Yugoslavia, it was a factor in motivating the Archduke's assassination in 1914. Hungarian leaders had a predominant voice in imperial circles and strongly rejected trialism because it would liberate many of their minorities from Hungarian rule they considered oppressive. Zametica argues that by 1909 war with Serbia was the main plan. Vienna's long term goal was to stop Russia from forming a Balkan League that would permanently stifle Austria's ambitions. Defeating Serbia would effectively destroy what Vienna saw as a potentially menacing, Russian-inspired Balkan League, because such a league without Serbia would simply be a non-starter. Last, but not least, a successful war against Serbia would at the same time solve the monarchy's South Slav question or at least ensure that Serbia could no longer play a role in it because the country would either not exist at all or it would be too small to matter. In short, smashing Serbia would make Austria-Hungary the unchallenged master of southeastern Europe. It was a dazzling prospect. Topic. Relations with key countries 
Austria made several overtures for friendlier relations with Russia after 1907. However these were undermined by espionage, propaganda, and hostile diplomacy by France. Austria decided the villain was probably Terrifile Delcache, the French ambassador to Russia. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Sazanov supported détente with Austria but was under attack by a faction led by Nicholas Hartwig, who was intensely supportive of the South Slavs against Austria, although Germany and Austria knew full well they would be outnumbered in a major war, they made no effort to develop joint plans, or to familiarize themselves with the other's strength and weaknesses. After the war started they remained far apart. Austria had deceived itself by trusting Conrad's elaborate plans, not realizing how bad was the army's morale, how inefficient and cumbersome was the reserve system, how thin were its stocks of munitions and supplies, or how badly its rail network had deteriorated with respect to Russia in recent years. Year by year as Germany discovered the depth of the weaknesses of Austria's military, and Vienna's inability to remedy deep defects, it was increasingly necessary for Germany to take more and more control of Austrian military operations. <laughs> <laughs> Assassination On 28 June 1914, Archduke Franz Ferdinand visited the Bosnian capital, Sarajevo. A group of six assassins C. V. Jetko Popovic, Gavrilo Princip, Mohamed Mehmed Basic, Nedelko Kabranovic, Trifko Grabes, Vaso Kubrilovic from the nationalist group Malada Bosna, supplied by the Black Hand, had gathered on the street where the Archduke's motorcade would pass. Kabranovich threw a grenade at the car, but missed. It injured some people in the next car and some bystanders, and Franz Ferdinand's convoy could carry on. The other assassins failed to act as the cars drove past them quickly. About an hour later, when Franz Ferdinand was returning from a visit at the Sarajevo hospital, the convoy took a wrong turn into a street where Gavrilo Princip by coincidence stood. With a pistol, Princip shot and killed Franz Ferdinand and his wife Sophie. The reaction among the Austrian people was mild, almost indifferent. Historian Zab Zeman notes, The event almost failed to make any impression whatsoever. On Sunday and Monday, June 28 and 29, the crowds in Vienna listened to music and drank wine, as if nothing had happened. The assassination was not necessarily a great event it was the reaction of multiple nations that turned it into one. Historian Christopher Clark compares Sarajevo with the September 11, 2001 attacks in New York City. They both exemplified the way in which a single or symbolic event, however deeply it may be enmeshed in larger historical processes, can change politics irrevocably, rendering old options obsolete and endowing new ones with an unforeseen urgency. <laughs> Aggressive strategic plans Conrad and his admirers took special pride in his elaborate war plans that were designed individually against various possible opponents, but did not take into account having to fight a two-front war against Russia and Serbia simultaneously. His plans were kept secret from his own diplomatic and political leadership he promised his secret operations would bring quick victory. Conrad assumed far more soldiers would be available, with much better training. The Austrian army had not been experienced a real war since 1866, whereas by contrast the Russian and Serbian armies had extensive up-to-date wartime experience in the previous decade. In practice, Conrad's soldiers were inferior to the enemy and his plans were riddled with flawed assumptions. 
His plans were based on railroad timetables from the 1870s, and ignored German warnings that Russia had much improved its own railroad capabilities. Conrad assumed the war would result in victory in six weeks. He assumed it would take Russia 30 days to mobilize its troops, and he assumed his own armies could be operational against Serbia in two weeks. When the war started, there were repeated delays, made worse when Conrad radically changed plans in the middle of mobilization. Russia did much better than expected, mobilizing two-thirds of its army within 18 days, and operating 362 trains a day, compared to 153 trains a day by the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Germany made a decisive mistake when it gave Austria-Hungary a blank check. That is a guarantee that Berlin would militarily back any decision made by Vienna. Austria's decision was to not just punish Serbia, but to invade, occupy, and destroy that country. Germany vehemently demanded an immediate invasion of Serbia, but Conrad delayed for over a month. Many army units were on leave to harvest crops and not scheduled to return until 25 July. To cancel those leaves would disrupt the harvest and the nation's food supply, scramble complex railroad schedules, alert Europe to Vienna's plans and give the enemy time to mobilize. Meanwhile Emperor Franz Joseph went on his long-scheduled three-week summer vacation. Austria depended entirely on Germany for support, they had no other allies, but the Kaiser had lost control of the German government. German Chancellor Bethmann Hollweg had repeatedly rejected pleas from Britain and Russia to put pressure on Austria to compromise. German elite and popular public opinion also was demanding mediation. He now reversed himself, and pleaded, or demanded, that Austria accept mediation, warning that Britain would probably join Russia and France if a larger war began. The Kaiser made a direct appeal to Emperor Franz Joseph along the same lines. However, Bethmann Hollweg and the Kaiser did not know that the German military had its own line of communication to the Austrian military, and insisted on rapid mobilization against Russia. German Chief of Staff Moltke sent an emotional telegram to the Austrian Chief of Staff Conrad on July 30. Austria-Hungary must be preserved, mobilize at once against Russia. Germany will mobilize. Vienna officials decided that Moltke was really in charge which was true and refused mediation and mobilized against Russia. <inaudible> <inaudible> Invading Serbia When he was finally ready, Conrad on August 12 sent his army south into Serbia, where it was decisively defeated with the loss of 100,000 soldiers. On the 22nd of August he launched an even larger campaign to the east against Russia through Galatia, leading to catastrophic defeats in the loss of 500,000 Austro-Hungarian soldiers. He blamed his railroad experts. Topic. Was Austria responsible? Austria was not ready for a large-scale war, and never planned on one. Its war plans assumed a limited war against Serbia and perhaps also a defensive war against Russia, which Austria knew it had no chance to defeat unless Germany joined in, which Berlin had promised to do. The first round of scholarship from the 1920s to the 1950s emphasized Austria's basic responsibility for launching the World War by its ultimatum to Serbia. In the 1960s, German historian Fritz Fischer radically shifted to the terms of the debate. While not denying Austria's responsibility, he shifted the primary blame to Germany, for its longtime goal of controlling most of Europe. 
According to Fischer, the reason for that goal was to suppress growing internal dissent inside Germany. In the 1960s and 1970s historians briefly summarized Vienna's actions. Samuel Williamson in 1983 returned to an emphasis of the centrality of Vienna's decisions. He says that Austria's policy was not timid or indicative of second-rate power pushed forward by Berlin. Austria acted like a great power making its own decisions based on its plan to dominate the Balkan region and hurl back the Serbian challenge. Berlin's blank check gave it freedom to act. The most important event was the ultimatum that was designed by Vienna to start a war. It ignored protests from Berlin and everywhere else. See also Causes of World War I July Crisis Diplomatic history of World War I French entry into World War I German entry into World War I Italian entry into World War I Russian entry into World War I Historiography of the causes of World War I International relations of the Great Powers 1814 to 1919 Notes Topic further reading Albrecht Carré, René. A Diplomatic History of Europe Since the Congress of Vienna 1958, 736 pp. Basic Survey Brandenburg, Eric. 1927 From Bismarck to the World War, A History of German Foreign Policy 1870-1914 online. Bridge, F.R. From Sadawa to Sarajevo, The Foreign Policy of Austria-Hungary 1866-1914 Reprint 2016 Online Review, Excerpt Bridge, Fr. The Habsburg Monarchy Among the Great Powers, 1815-1918 pp. 288-380. Diplomatic History 1900-1912, in C. L. Mowat, ed. The New Cambridge Modern History, Vol. 12, The Shifting Balance of World Forces 1898-1945, 2nd ed., 1968, online pp 112-139. Clark, Christopher. The Sleepwalkers, How Europe Went to War in 1914-2013 Excerpt Sleepwalkers Lecture by Clark, Online Cornwall, Mark, ed. The Last Years of Austria-Hungary University of Exeter Press, 2002. ISBN 0-85989-563-7 Craig, Gordon A. The World War I Alliance of the Central Powers in Retrospect, The Military Cohesion of the Alliance Journal of Modern History 37 No. 3 1965. pp. 336-344 Online Encyclopædia Britannica 12th ed., 1922 comprises the 11th edition plus three new volumes 30-31-32 that cover events since 1911 with very thorough coverage of the war as well as every country and colony. Partly online full text of Volume 30 Abbey to English History Online Free, the article Austrian Empire is Volume 30 pp 313-343 Dedia, Vladimir. The Road to Sarajevo 1966, Comprehensive History of the Assassination with Detailed Material on the Empire and Serbia. Evans, R. J. W., Von Strandman, Hartmut Pogger, eds. 1988. The Coming of the First World War. Clarendon Press. 
ISBN 978-0-19-150059-6, essays by scholars from both sides Fay, Sidney B. The Origins of the World War, two vols in one. Second ed., 1930, online, Passam Fromken, David. Europe's Last Summer, Who Started the Great War in 1914. 2004. Gooch, G. P. Recent Revelations of European Diplomacy, 1940, pp. 103 to 59, summarizes memoirs of major participants. Gooch, G. P. Before the War, Volume 1, 1939, pp. 368 to 438 on Ehrenthal Online. Free Gooch, G. P. Before the War, Volume 2, 1939, pp. 373 to 4. 447 on Birchtold Online Free Hamilton, Richard F. and Holger H. Herwig, eds. Decisions for War, 1914-1917 Scholarly essays on Serbia, Austria-Hungary, Germany, Russia, France, Britain, Japan, Ottoman Empire, Italy, the United States, Bulgaria, Romania, and Greece. Herweg, Holger H. The First World War, Germany and Austria-Hungary 1914-1918 2009. Herweg, Holger H., and Neil Heyman. Biographical Dictionary of World War I 1982. Can, Robert A. A. History of the Habsburg Empire, 1526-1918 U of California Press, 1974, Highly Detailed History, Emphasis on Ethnicity Joel, James, Martel, Gordon 2013. The Origins of the First World War, 3rd ed. Taylor and Francis. McMeekin, Sean. July 1914, Countdown to War 2014, Scholarly Account, Day-by-Day Day Excerpt Macmillan, Margaret 2013. The War That Ended Peace, The Road to 1914. Random House, Major Scholarly Overview Mitchell, A. Wes. The Grand Strategy of the Habsburg Empire Princeton Up, 2018 Oaks, Elizabeth and Eric Roman. Austria-Hungary and the Successor States, a reference guide from the Renaissance to the present 2003 Otte, T.G. July Crisis, The World's Descent into War, Summer 1914 Cambridge Up, 2014, Online Review Paddock, Troy R.E. A Call to Arms, Propaganda, Public Opinion, and Newspapers in the Great War 2004 Online Palmer, Allen. Twilight of the Habsburgs, The Life and Times of Emperor Francis Joseph. New York, Weidenfeld and Nicholson, 1995. ISBN 0871136651 Redlich, Joseph. Emperor Francis Joseph of Austria. New York, Macmillan, 1929. Online free Rich, Norman. Great Power Diplomacy, 1814 to 1914, 1991. Comprehensive Survey. Ritter, Gerhard. The Sword and the Scepter, Volume 2: The European Powers and the Wilhelminian Empire, 1890 to 1914, 1970. Covers military policy in Germany, also Austria, pp. 237 to 61, and France, Britain, Russia. Schmidt, Bernadotte. E. The Coming of the War, 1914, 2 volume 1930, Comprehensive History Online Volume 1, Online Volume 2, especially Volume 2 Chains 20 pp 334-382 Scott, Jonathan French. Five Weeks, The Surge of Public Opinion on the Eve of the Great War, 1927, Online, especially ch4. The Psychotic Explosion in Austria-Hungary", pp. 63–98. Silberstein, Gerard E. The High Command and Diplomacy in Austria-Hungary, 1914–1916. 
Journal of Modern History 42.4 1970, 586-605, online Sondhaus, Lawrence. Franz Konrad von Hotzendorf, Architect of the Apocalypse 2000. Steed, Henry Wickham. The Habsburg Monarchy 1919, online detailed contemporary account Stowell, Ellery Corey. The Diplomacy of the War of 1914-1915-728 pages online free Strachan, Hugh Francis Anthony 2004. The First World War. Viking. ISBN 978-0-670-03295-2 Trachtenberg, Mark. The Meaning of Mobilization in 1914. International Security 15 No. 3 1991. pp. 120-150 online Tucker, Spencer C., ed. The European Powers in the First World War, an Encyclopedia 1996-816 pp. Watson, Alexander. Ring of Steel, Germany and Austria-Hungary in World War I Vavrot, Geoffrey. A Mad Catastrophe, The Outbreak of World War I and the Collapse of the Habsburg Empire 2014. Williamson, Samuel R. Austria-Hungary and the Origins of the First World War 1991. Zametica, John. Folly and Malice, The Habsburg Empire, The Balkans and the Start of World War I London, Shepherd Walwyn, 2017. 416 pp. Historiography Deke, John. The Great War and the Forgotten Realm, The Habsburg Monarchy and the First World War. Journal of Modern History 86 336 336-80, online Horn, John, ed. A Companion to World War 12012-38 Topics Essays by Scholars Kramer, Allen. Recent Historiography of the First World War, Part 1. Journal of Modern European History, February 2014, 12 No. 1 pp 5-27. Recent Historiography of the First World War, Part 2. May 2014, 12 No. 2 pp 155-174. Langdon, John W. Emerging from Fisher's Shadow, Recent Examinations of the Crisis of July 1914. History Teacher 20.1 63-86, in JSTOR emphasis on roles of Germany and Austria. Mombauer, Annika. Guilt or Responsibility? The Hundred Year Debate on the Origins of World War I. Central European History 48.4, 2015, 541 to 564. Mombauer, Annika. The Origins of the First World War: Controversies and Consensus. 2002. Focus on Germany. Mulligan, William. The Trial Continues, New Directions in the Study of the Origins of the First World War. English Historical Review 2014-129 No. 538 pp. 639-666. Sked, Allen. Austria-Hungary and the First World War. Histoire politique 1, 2014, 16 to 49, online free. Winter, J. and Antoine Prost eds. The Great War in History: Debates and Controversies, 1914 to the Present, 2005. Topic: 
Primary sources Austro-Hungarian monarchy. Austro-Hungarian Red Book. 1915 English translations of official documents to justify the war. Online Albertini, Luigi. The Origins of the War of 1914, 3 volume 1952, volume 3 pp 66 to 111. Gooch, GP Recent Revelations of European Diplomacy, 1928, pp 269 to 330. Online Major 1914 documents from BYU. The German White Book, 1914, English translation of documents used by Germany to defend its actions. Topic: External links. Major 1914 documents from BYU online. Articles relating to Austria-Hungary at the International Encyclopedia of the First World War. Habsburg is an email discussion list dealing with the culture and history of the Habsburg monarchy and its successor states in Central Europe since 1500, with discussions, syllabi, book reviews, queries, conferences, edited daily by scholars since 1994.